Magnetic Makers, it's Prof. Gene. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use a magnetic switch, sometimes called a door switch or a reed switch. These switches have two sides, and we'll write code to tell when the two pieces are next to each other, which is useful to determine if a door is closed, or whether the two pieces are apart from each other, which can tell if a door is open. We'll learn how to wire this up to a Raspberry Pi Pico and program the magnetic switch so we can determine its state, open or closed. Then we'll issue a challenge to build an alarm that lights up and plays an alarm sound when the door is open. So let's open that door to big learning. So this is how the magnetic switch or reed switch works. There are two wires on one part of the magnetic switch. This first part with the wires doesn't actually have a magnet in it. These wires are sort of like the two legs of a button. They have no polarity. One wire goes into a signal pin, the other wire goes into ground, and it doesn't matter which goes into which. Now this part here without the wires contains a magnet. And when the magnet comes close to the switch part with the wires, the two parts of a switch inside this wired component are pulled together. They form a circuit, electricity passes through and the switch can report that it's closed. But when the magnet is pulled away from the switch and you can test the distance after you build this, it's probably about maybe half an inch in the switch that we're using, then the pieces of the switch inside this wired part come apart. There isn't a closed circuit, electricity cannot flow through this and the switch reads as open. Now you'll wire a door switch up just like a button. So you can choose a signal pin. I'm gonna use GP14 and a ground pin. And again, no polarity. So just make sure one wire goes to signal and the other goes to ground. And not only do you wire it up like a button, but you also program it like a button, exactly like a button. Now you might recall we refer to buttons as sometimes being called momentary switch buttons. Well, this is a switch, so we use the same code. If you completed the CircuitPython school lesson on external buttons, you know that we import digital I.O. We set up a digital in-out device. You can name it anything. Instead of button, this time I'm gonna call it door underscore sensor. And like an external button, we switch to input and we set up a pull up resistor. And remember, an external button was true when it was not pushed, false when it was pushed. Well here, the door sensor is true when it's open and false when it's closed since closed is like the button being pushed. That's it. Let's code this up and then issue a challenge. So I'll put a comment up top that says magnetic switch with a Pico and I'll import board comma time comma digital IO and then let's set up the door sensor magnetic switch just like a button. I'll call my switch door underscore sensor and I'll set that equal to digital IO dot digital in out capital D capital I capital O and I'll pass in board dot GP 14 because that's the signal pin that I'm using. Then underneath on door underscore sensor, I'm going to call the dot switch underscore two underscore input method passing in in pull lowercase setting that equal to digital io dot capital p pull dot all caps up so that makes sure that my door sensor is considered to be a digital input device and it's using a pull up resistor then in my while true loop make sure it's capital t and a colon at the end we'll first check to see if door underscore sensor dot value colon so if this occurs that means that the value property is true and it's true when the door is open, the two pieces are apart from each other. And if that occurs, we'll just print door open. Else, outdent, colon, indent, print, door closed. And below this, I'll outdent time.sleep passing in 0.25, just so that I don't overwhelm the serial console with too many prints. Now let's open our serial console, and we'll save this to our CircuitPy volume as code.py, and let's see how this works. So the two pieces are together like they would be on a door, Door closed is printing, pull them apart, door open. Push them together, door closed, pull them apart, door open, bring them together, closed, open, closed, open, looking good. So now I'll save this to my CircuitPython school folder on my computer. I'll call this magnetic switch with Pico and then close this tab and reopen code.py on my CircuitPy volume. And now here's your challenge. Use what you've learned so far in our course to create a door alarm that will go off when a door is open. So add a single LED light to pin GP15 and add a speaker using pin GP16 for audio out. Download the alarm folder at the course URL bit.ly slash circuitpython school files. That folder contains a single mp3 file, siren.mp3. 
Copy this to your CircuitPy volume. If you don't have enough room, be sure to delete any old sound folders that you're not using. Also, know that you can remove any library files that you aren't currently using and restore them later. Now, when the door is open, meaning when pieces of the magnetic switch are apart, light up that LED and play the alarm sound. And when the door closes, turn off the LED and stop playing the sound once any current sound is done playing. So it should work like this. So you should be able to do this, pause, give it a shot, and resume, and let's compare answers. So let's modify the code we've already written in this lesson. First, we'll set up an LED, and I'll do that just underneath the door sensor. We'll call this LED. We'll set it equal to digital IO dot digital in out, capital D, capital I, capital O, and we'll pass in board dot GP15. Then we need to set this up as a digital IO output device. So we'll say LED dot direction equals digital IO dot direction with a capital D dot output in all caps. But there's also another way to set up a digital in out device as an output. Output, so I'm going to comment this out and in the line below I'm going to write a line that does the same thing it's just LED dot switch underscore two underscore output open and close parens that does the same thing as above then when the door sensor dot value is true below where we print door open we're going to say LED dot value equals true so that turns on the LED and below where we print door closed we're going to say LED dot value equals false that turns off the LED now let's head back to the top of the code where we can set up our speaker and import the library so that we can play mp3 files. So we'll say from audio mp3 import mp3 decoder with a capital M, capital P, capital D. Then below this from audio PWMIO, we're going to import PWM audio out. That's with capital PWMA and capital O and out. And we're going to import that as audio out capital A capital O. Again, this is all code that we learned about in previous lessons. Then we'll set up our speaker on our Pico and we'll refer to this audio out device as audio and set that equal to audio out capital A capital O passing in board.gp16. I've clipped the tip of my speaker's audio plug to GP16. Then we'll set the path and the path equals in quotes the string alarm slash that's because we've got a folder named alarm that has our sound file. And then below this, we set up the MP3 decoder. So we'll first create a variable called file name, and we'll set that equal to the string siren.mp3. That's the only file that we're going to play. Even though we're not going to be playing that file in the next couple of lines, we need a file name in order to set up the decoder. Then we'll create a variable called mp3 underscore file, and we'll set that equal to, and we're going to open, in between parentheses, path plus file name, comma, and then in quotes rb to read in the binary values. And then below this, we create a decoder. We're going to call it decoder, so that's the variable that holds a decoder, and set this equal to mp3 decoder, passing in mp3 underscore file. So we create that decoder once, and we can reuse it anytime we want to play the mp3 file. So we're going to define a function below to play mp3s. We'll say def play underscore mp3. Between parentheses, we pass in file name, colon. Then below this, we'll set up our decoder.filename property, setting that equal to open in between parentheses, path plus file name comma, followed by the string rb. Again, that reads the binary data from the file name that we passed into this function. And then below that, we just say audio.play, passing in decoder, and while audio.playing, colon, pass. Then down in our while true loop, if the door is open, we're going to play underscore mp3, passing in between the parens, the string siren.mp3. And that's it. So let's open the serial console. Oh, and I see I have the tab up here. I don't have my code.py. I was testing out some code beforehand, and I didn't save the last code that I'd edited back onto my CircuitPy volume. Yours probably says code.py, but I'm going to go ahead and save this as code.py to my CircuitPy volume. And now we're ready to test this out. So I'm going to separate the switch like I'm opening the door. And oh, there goes the alarm, and the LED light is on. And after I closed it, I had to wait for the MP3 file to stop playing, but the LED light went off, and so did the sound play. And this seems to be working great. So before I forget, I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython school folder as magnetic switch door alarm with Pico. But Coder, now that you know how to use magnetic door switches, otherwise known as read switches, no one can sneak up on you. Continue to build those coding and electronic skills. There's more goodness to come. And in the meantime, make something awesome.